Hi folks, this is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in Adobe Premiere Elements. I've got a project on my timeline and as you can see, I'm just going to zoom back a little. As you can see, the project runs about seven minutes long. It's a fairly complicated project, right? We have video and audio from the camcorder itself running along video track one and audio track one. We also have narration. In here we have background music and we have done some keyframing here with our background music to raise and lower the levels of the music whenever the narration is playing. Additionally, you can see we have at one point layered video and then we have a fairly complicated animation at the very end here. Look at this, it uses like 15 tracks of video. So this is a fairly complicated segment. It's not a very long segment. But this segment is actually only part of a 20 minute project I've been working on. Now I could continue to build out the project here on this single timeline, but although the program can probably handle it and my computer can handle it, the more complication you add, the more things you got going on here, the more liabilities you face. In other words, there's more opportunity for something to go wrong. I encourage you to work on any longer project and shorter pieces. I work on my projects in pieces from five to 10 minutes long. That's the way professionals work in Hollywood. They don't edit a whole two hour movie on a single timeline. They're actually working on it in small segments. And then they put all those segments together. And that's the best and most efficient way to work when you're editing video. Also work on a longer project in short pieces and then output each of those pieces as an MP4 and do a final mix where you put them all together and the program will perform so much more efficiently. Also, you notice here on the timeline, there are a couple of places where there's some yellow orange along the top of the timeline. There it is. I just zoomed in by pressing on the plus key. Now, these yellow orange segments are areas where the program is not able to soft render very effectively. If you've got a lot of those orange lines along the top of your timeline, that too is a liability. It can sometimes choke your program. Your program can probably handle it. The computer can probably handle it, but why risk it? Whenever you see some yellow lines up there, just press the enter key and this will render the timeline. It doesn't do anything with regards to the actual production of your video, but it does create some hard renders. You notice those orange lines now are turning green. It does create some hard renders so that your, your timeline will play more efficiently and the program will not have to create renders on the fly. Now, once I've created this segment, all I need to do is output the segment. And I can do that by going to export and share. And I'm going to go to devices. Now this project is 1920 by 1080. It's high definition. So I'm going to select that as my output. And I'm going to call this yearbook part three. And then I'm going to browse. I'm going to put it in a folder called final mix. We'll select that folder and then just let it go and let it uh, render that segment. I'm going to pause the screen recording here. It's going to take about five minutes. So I'm going to pause this and I'll come back with you right after the render is done. Okay, our render is just about done here. What's the advantage of doing this? I always say it's like bringing groceries in from the car. If you try to bring everything in in one big trip, there's a chance you're going to drop your apples and oranges all over the ground. But if you make a lot of short trips, uh, you're sure that everything gets in and your chances of running into problems are greatly reduced. Okay, so we'll click done here. Now we've output this finished piece as an MP4. Let's go over to our final mix project. Okay, so here's the project I created for our final mix. Now let's add the segments we output. I could either go to add media and go to files and folders or my favorite shortcut. Let's just go to project assets and double click on a blank space. That opens up our browse window and we can select final mix. There are the four pieces of our movie. Let's go ahead and select them and add them to our project. And just drag them here. One, two, three, four. And there we go. Now we've got our movie. I can press the backslash key above the enter key to see the whole movie here. My entire movie runs about a little over 17 minutes, but notice that what I've got here are only final videos. Uh, it will be very easy for me to output this finished piece as an MP4 or even a DVD. The program's not going to have to re-render anything. It's all in a nice, efficient format 
that the program could work with. I encourage you to work on your longer projects and short segments. You'll find just a lot more stability and efficiency if you do. Now, if you want more tips and tricks about workflows or about any of the tools in Premiere Elements, I hope you'll check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. And if you want to know everything there is to know about Adobe Premiere Elements, check out the moviepix.com guide for Premiere Elements. It's available at amazon.com. I wrote the book. I'm Steve Grisetti, and I hope to see you again real soon.